Now we come to our final speaker, Mr. Ed Thorne. Ed is a writer, improviser and software engineer. He is so devoted to biology that his own body is actually made of biological matter. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ed Thorne! Good evening. Today I'm going to be talking about cracking the C-value enigma. We like to think of DNA as <laughs> We like to think of DNA as encoding for characteristics like strength, intelligence, or eye color. But in reality, this kind of DNA is massively in the minority. Almost all of the human genome is made up of non-coding DNA. But you know this already because you listen to Cat. <laughs> but if you're joining us just now on YouTube, I'm blowing your mind here. So. <laughs> So yeah, the, a lot of the human genome, the majority of the human genome is made up of this non-coding or junk DNA. Sorry, cat. <laughs> Which begs the question of what exactly is it doing there? Why do we have all this DNA that's basically useless? Now, if you're a so-called expert, you can talk about retroviruses and <laughs> gene switches. And I think we've had enough of listening to experts. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, instead, we propose the Histiaeus hypothesis. The Histiaeus hypothesis states that the reason that we have so much of this non-functional DNA inside the human genome is because it's being used as a hard drive by aliens. <laughs> so the first question this raises is, why? Why would aliens want to use the human genome for data storage? And we're going to answer this question through the lens of a tech review. You have the option between using the human genome or using a solid state drive. Which is your discerning extraterrestrial civilization going to choose? Well, firstly, you're going to have to build your hard drives. And if you're building a solid state drive, you're going to need access to lots of really rare elements. You're going to need to mine and refine rare earth minerals. Um, you're going to need uh, silicon or germanium if you're from one of those fancy planets. And when they run out, uh, you basically, you don't really have any options but to go and strip mine another planet or to do nuclear fusion, which is tough. DNA, by contrast, is made up of abundant elements like carbon and nitrogen and hydrogen, and it makes more of itself, which is great as a building material. So obviously the human genome is better in this respect. Secondly, you want something that's durable. So now that we've built our hard drives, we're gonna drop them off onto Earth-like planets with our data on them, and we're gonna come back in a few billion years and see what happens. When we come back to the human planet, we find they've multiplied. We've got more hard drives than we started with. <laughs> And they've created civilization, they've created medicine that makes them even more durable than they were. They've improved themselves. Our data is safer than ever. <laughs> so, with an optimistic heart, we go to the solid state drive planet where... Right. <laughs> yeah, so they haven't, they, they haven't reproduced at all, which is appalling. Uh, they've decayed. Uh, our data's probably... They haven't started any civilizations. I mean, come on. Uh, so our data's probably lost, but let's say that some of the units survive. So step three, resilience. We pick up one of the solid state drives and carry it into our spaceship. But disaster strikes. We drop it. It probably doesn't explode, but it shatters and you lose the data, which is, you know, that defeats the whole purpose. Human, similar tragedy. It's actually not a big deal. <laughs> the DNA within an individual is massively redundant. It's quite difficult to accidentally destroy through trauma. So actually, your data's recoverable and everything's... <laughs> Everything's okay. So now I've convinced you that the human genome is great as a data storage format. Um, what predictions does this theory actually make? Well, firstly, we would expect aliens to come back from time to time to retrieve their data. And it makes sense that this would look like abducting a human, making them... <laughs> I, I, I see we've got some sequel fans in the audience. Uh, Abducting a human, subjecting them to some kind of medical procedure to extract a sample of their DNA, uh, and then dropping them. <laughs> yeah. 
but the thing about the human genome is obviously we don't all have the exact same copy of DNA. It varies roughly geographically. You don't want to keep going to the same spot, abducting the same kind of uh, group of humans. You want to get a good distribution. So you want to leave behind some kind of marker that's visible from the sky, but is temporary and will vanish after a couple of seasons. Crop circles are perfect for this purpose. <laughs> So the next time you take a sample, you just find an area that doesn't have any crop circles and take your sample from there. Um, so an obvious question is, if the human genome is being stored, uh, is being used for data storage, which by this point, I mean, I'm convinced, <laughs> what kind of data are aliens storing on it? Uh, and the first clue is that obviously DNA isn't static, it mutates over time. Uh, and this immediately means that it's not great for storing something like text, because uh, even a small amount of corruption in a text file will quickly render it unreadable. By contrast, multimedia can tolerate quite large amounts of corruption. So pictures and audio and, and video are all fine and still basically usable. They just get slightly degraded. So aliens are presumably storing multimedia in the human genome. What multimedia? Well, let's look at human usage. In <laughs> In 2013, it was reported that about 15% of the internet, whatever that means, was being used for cat videos. <laughs> yeah. We're going there. So, and indeed, if we look at the human genome with an eye for looking for cat videos, we do find what appear to be metadata tags for... <laughs> I'm, I'm loving the slow clap ratio here. It's... Um, oh yeah, so this is the problem with DNA, which is that it's really slow to retrieve it. You've got to sequence it, you've got to convert it, it's a whole nightmare. What you want is some kind of preview mechanism to, to see what you're about to access before you go to the trouble of accessing it. So like how uh, with YouTube, we have thumbnails that let us preview what we're gonna see before we click on a funny animal video. Uh, we would, <laughs> don't, don't read them, it's just, we would, We would expect aliens to have come up with some kind of equivalent. Now, obviously, thumbnails don't really make sense in this context. What you want is some kind of large, animal, uh, large image of a funny alien animal that's visible from space and has no real business otherwise being there. Ladies and gentlemen, over a thousand years ago, the Nazca people trudged out into the desert in Peru and drew the Nazca lines, which show Alien animals that do not exist on Earth. They went through massive effort, trudged out into the desert in the blistering heat, and drew pictures of animals that don't exist. Can I point out, other the theories of non-coding DNA, cat, do not begin to explain how the Nazca lines got there. <laughs> and that, in itself, is proof enough for me of the Histiaeus hypothesis. Thank you very much.